It's Valentine's weekend and it's cold. It's really cold, especially cold for Southeast Texas. But I trust that uh, as we think about Valentine's and, and love and particularly God's love, that God's love will warm our hearts and uh, we'll be inspired to, to live lives that reflect the love of God uh, to those who are around us. Valentine's does celebrate all kinds of love, particularly friendship love, uh, a romantic love, the love that we have for our children and our spouse and, and the people around us. But it's not the only kind of love. And because Valentine's falls on, on Sunday this year, I thought it only appropriate to share a message of, about God's love. God's love as spoken to us by Jesus in uh, John, the 15th chapter, verse 13, where Jesus says, Greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Let us pray. Lord of heaven and earth, you give us this day and all our days, but this particular time to rest and renew and refresh and, and listen for your still small voice. And so, oh Lord, we, we pray that we might hear a word from you so that we might exercise a deeper faith and trust as we walk with you through the course of this week. Lord, in so many ways, you speak your love to us without ever saying a word creation, protection, blessing, salvation, and all the things that make our lives life by your gracious giving to us. Lord, we know that there's no real life or light or love outside of you. So speak to us again through Jesus, the light, life, and love, as we seek to praise, honor, and glorify you, not just with words or creeds or promises or doctrines, but with acts of, of forgiveness, kindness, and love to all those who are around us, just like you do, O oh Lord. This is the day that you have made. We rejoice and love your world, love your people, and love you, O oh Lord. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Sharing with you from the Gospel of John, the 15th chapter, verses 12 through 17. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because a servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Let us pray. O oh God, who makes all things in love, uh, we join our hearts to offer thanks to you for the blessings of life in your world and especially for the gifts of love and friendship, for the joy of family and kinship. Our lives at times, O oh Lord, reflect your loving presence, and we beam brightly. But there are other times, O oh Lord, when love seems far away from our hearts and we're loveless, lonely, and lost. And so, O oh Lord, this day, even as we celebrate love, we, we ask your forgiveness for not uh, loving others as you love them, or even as you call us to love them. And yet, in all things, O oh Lord, you do love us lavishly and without reservation. You pour out your love upon us. And so we ask, O oh Lord, that once again you plant within us the seed for loving others and nurture that seed. Help us to take the risk of opening often our walled off hearts so that we might be vulnerable to others in our lives and take the risk of love. May your perfect love indeed cast out all fear that we might have in our hearts this day and enable us to give ourselves anew to those that we encounter on this journey with Christ. Hear our prayers for those who cross our path that we might fully share more completely the ministry of Jesus, Jesus's ministry of healing freeing, reconciling love as we lift up a world to you that is broken and hurting and so often, Lord, fearful. We pray for uh, 
those who feel unloved, unwanted in this world. And may we have the courage to reach out to them with care and compassion. Lord, help us to love and care for those who are sick, imprisoned, lonely, lost, and grieving. The faith, the hope you've planted within us, Lord, has much to offer our world. But without the abiding love of Christ in us, we're nothing, absolutely nothing. So come now and dwell within us. Recreate us, us as people able to love and bind us to one another for the sake of all your world. For these and all our prayers we offer in Christ's name. Amen. You know, everything is bigger in Texas. We might even use the word now mega. Uh, and everything is, is mega these days. Mega millions, mega bucks, uh, mega stars. Everything's mega sized. Uh, sites for vaccines are now being referred to as mega sites. Uh, stadiums are being opened up so that folks can uh, go there and get their COVID shots. There's mega universities, uh, schools that uh, have thousands, tens of thousands of students online, making them now mega universities. Just last Saturday, uh, there was a mega cookie drop. It's Girl Scouts time to, to sell their, their famous cookies. And so uh, the distribution of cookies was referred to as a mega cookie drop. And so this weekend, as we celebrate love and uh, talk about uh, uh, things that are great, and Jesus' reference to greater love has no one than this than to lay down uh, one's life for one's friends, my question this, then is this, so what about mega love? What makes it mega? Well, the word mega comes from the Greek word megas, and that's the word that Jesus is used to describe this greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for one's friends. In both John's gospel and the epistles that he writes, he speaks about Jesus making, uh, laying down his life, uh, making the perfect sacrifice for our sins, the world's sins, all people's sins. And it's out of that idea of Jesus making a sacrifice that greater love has no one than this that is, is, is lifted up and greater is spoken about as mega. And so to receive Christ's love for us is, is fantastic. It's fantastic for humanity, for humanity. It's fantastic for you and me as disciples and followers and believers. believers. But does it, does it end there? Does Christ's mega love for the world end there? Well, as I've mentioned, it is Valentine's weekend. There's cards, flowers, candy, gifts, going out to eat. Well, maybe not so much of that, but those are certainly the things, the order of the day, things that we use to express our love to those who are around us. And it's that touchy-feely kind of love for that special someone, but it's also just uh, the love uh, of, of our friends uh, that we have that we're expressing now as well. And there's nothing wrong with that, but, but once again, the question that... Uh, I want us to wrestle with is, is this the whole story about love? C.S. Lewis, uh, in his writings, delineate uh, two kinds of love. Need love, that's the first kind of love, and it, it's, it's the most common kind of love in our world. I love you because you meet my needs. It might be that you help my self-esteem, you boost my self-esteem. It might be that I simply need to be loved. Uh, and most of us do really need companionship. That's the way we're designed to, to relate to one another. But need love is always born out of this emptiness that we feel on the inside. It's something that, that needs to be filled, that hole that needs to be filled. And uh, it's, it's kind of a love that we're, we're always grasping to, to fill with through others, attain through others or other things. And Lewis contends that many times we as humans say, I love you. What we're really saying is that I need you, I want you. Now the opposite of this, or the other side of this kind of love is the love that he describes as, as gift love. Um, it's not born of, of emptiness or lack, but it's born out of, of, out of the fullness of life. And the goal of gift love is to enrich, to enhance the person with whom we're in love with rather than to extract 
something from them. Gift love moves out to bless and to increase rather than to acquire or diminish. Gift is more like, gift love is more like a, a bountiful spring or fountain overflowing with, with love rather than a black hole that, that's wanting to suck in love. And Lewis concludes that God's love is really gift love. In other words, uh, it's the same as, as, as agape love, self-sacrificing love. Really and truly, we, we know that God is love. Scripture teaches that. That might be the first little verse that you learned as a child. It certainly was what was taught in, in the nursery department of Sunday schools. God is love. That's the first lesson that little children learn. God is love, found in 1 John chapter 4, verse, verse 16. And it's out of God's love for us that, that love flows through our lives. That fountain of God's love flows in us and through us and, and, and out of us. We love, because we, we love because he first loved us. We love because God first loved us, 1 John 4, 19. And so God is that fountainhead, that spring, that beginning, that genesis of love, and that love flows through us to others. And interestingly enough, God's love is, is, is not a feeling kind of love. We never really hear anything about God's feelings being expressed to us, but we do, through the scriptures and through Jesus' teachings, um, experience or learn or glean or know that God's love comes to us in actions, in active verbs. God creates, God blesses, God protects, God redeems, and in that way, God loves. God's love for us ultimately is shown through Christ. But likewise, that's not a feeling, uh, or it's not a feeling that you and I have, have access to. Drew Duke, a writer, <clears throat> speaks of her uh, second grade Valentine's party. In those days, it was not uncommon for there to be a great big box where everybody dumped in their, their valentines or placed their valentines. And so the box would be decorated up and on the, the day of valentines, someone would pass out all the valentines to, to their classmates. Well, with the box being decorated and on the teacher's desk, uh, it was time to, to get valentines. And so Drew's mom had, had bought a box of, of 35 valentines, one for basically every classmate in her class. And uh, Drew finds out that mom's bought this box of uh, Valentines and she says, why so many? I only need four Valentines for my four best friends. Uh, I don't really like all the people in my class. Now mom didn't say another word. Drew signed her four cards and put their names on the outside of the envelope and took them to school later on the next day and, and dropped them in the box. Uh, nothing more said about Valentine's until uh, she came home. And mom didn't say anything more about Valentine's. So at the party, everybody was having a great time, uh, excited about getting their Valentine's. And of course, the popular students get more Valentine's and some of the rest. And, and Drew began to look around and notice that uh, uh, one girl in particular wasn't getting any Valentines. And as the box was slowly being emptied, finally a Valentine came, uh, came to the girl and she opened it up excitingly, looking around in the room, wondering who had sent her a Valentine. And Drew looks over her shoulder and notices that it's signed by my secret admirer. Well, Drew knew who that My Secret Admirer was. It was her mom. Later on, Drew learned that her mom had taken the rest of those Valentines and gotten the class roster from her teacher and signed them all My Secret Admirer and made sure that they were distributed to all the other kids in the class so that everyone would get a Valentine on that particular Valentine's Day at that particular Valentine's party. It was then that Drew learned the lesson of God's love, God's love for everybody, but especially the least and the last and the lonely. Like Drew, 
it's hard to imagine any definition of love other than that warm, personal, fuzzy feeling or the friendship that, that comes with companionship and, and compatibility, the folks that we get along with. You and I live in the era of Facebook where a friend may simply be someone that we've never met before, but uh, click on their picture because they've invited us to be a, a friend. It's, it's someone that we like. But the love of Christ demands as friend, the love that Christ demands as friends is, is much, much different. It's more than just liking or picking and choosing the ones of our love. Being a friend of Jesus calls for more, requires more, demands more. God's love, Jesus' love, is radical action. It's gift love. Gift love is an action, a really difficult action. In a word, sacrifice like giving up time, money, energy, using talents. But it's even more than that. It's a willingness to die, not just for your child or your spouse or a best friend, but how about a fellow follower of Christ, a friend in Christ? Who in your circle of friends and followers of Jesus, folks that are connected to your community of faith, would you and I actually be willing to die for. That's where this passage of scripture pushes us, takes us. And so quickly we have to realize that, that Christ calls us to lay down our lives, not just our talents, our gifts, our abilities, our attention, but our very lives, our very life uh, for those who Jesus calls friends. Oh yeah, it's real easy to make the little sacrifices of time and energy, money, uh, for sure. But to die? Paul says this in Romans chapter 5. For while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Talk about mega love. The command, the pattern, the example of mega love is Jesus. And when we study all the commands and imperatives of the Gospels that are found in the four Gospels, we see that you know, Jesus uh, has, has many commands, but none like this one. This one seems to take precedence over all the others. And the central command has nothing to do with with doctrine or church size or order of worship. It couldn't be any more simple to understand or more difficult to carry out. Love each other as I have loved you. No one has greater love, no one has mega love than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Talk about love, mega love. Let us pray. God of boundless love, whose word to us in Christ is always one of love, fill us with your love, gift love, that we may follow the commandment that Christ gave to us to love one another as you love him and as he loves us, so that we might be the community of friends that he calls us to be. We pray this in his name. Amen. Happy Valentine's. May your life be filled with Christ's love, overflowing into the love, life and love, lives of, of all those around you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen.